All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. So before we get started, uh, let's kind of go around and introduce ourselves. We'll start out with uh, ladies first. Carrie. Hey, good afternoon. You. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> Carrie Hagen-Smith with uh, Interest Saving Solution. You know, people talk about good debt, bad debt. We talk about good interest, bad interest, and all the bad interest goes out of your pocket. Let's see if we can capture it back. Love it. Uh, Fernando. Uh, my name is Fernando Leone. I'm with uh, Single Point of Contact. We're a managed security service provider in California. Hey, I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to bounce because we're I I got general contractors over here getting my house on the market and I just got another guy coming in right now. I gotta help him now. Oh my god! So oh, I got to sorry. With that. <laughs> yeah, no, dog, dogs are gonna go crazy. All right, guys. Sorry, I gotta go. Have fun with that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, Alan. Alan Reeves with Mouse Calls and Prevarious and Shield IQ and a couple of other brands. I don't want to bore you to death. We'll focus in on that. Um, I've been uh, been in business with several different businesses since 1998. I predate Google, so I'm aging myself and uh, look forward to this. This is the highlight of every week for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. So uh, John Pyron, the business doctor. Um, and you can just check out everything you need to know about me uh, right here on this YouTube channel and also on johnpyron.com. And so today we're going to talk about uh, client systems, client retention, client referrals. And we'll chat uh, about whatever else we want to get, uh, chat about. And, you know, some more people are dialing in here and we're going to get rock and rolling. So... Let me go ahead and mute everybody. And Alan, you can mute yourself. Um, all right. So I've been bringing on, uh, a, I brought on five new clients over the last 45 days. And every single one of them, it, I know, yeah, every single one of them. And I usually find this about 95% of the time, in the years that I've been doing this is, you know, one of one of the people been in business for 22 years. Another one has been in business for 14 years. Uh, let's see, the other one has been in business for 11. Um, the other one has built two companies and, and built a very successful company for 16 years and then sold it. And now she's building the new one, brand new, just started right out of the gate. And then. Who was the other one? Oh, the other one just got started two years ago, but it has 195 satisfied clients. And so when I ask them, okay, tell me about your uh, referrals. Tell me about your, how do you get, do you have any testimonials from clients? Do you have any reviews? Do you have any ratings? Um, some of them do. Not very much. Some of them don't. I'm like, how do you, how do you build your business? Oh man, we go out and we, we knock on doors. We go to chamber events. We, we, um, uh, you know, mail out mailers. We, uh, you know, talk to family and friends. Um, I go, what about referrals? Yeah, we get referred. We get referred quite a bit. Yeah, uh, people refer us business. I'm going, how do you get those referrals? Well, people call us up and say Joe and Mary referred us. Okay. Any other thing? No. And the one thing that I, I'm excited about is. Every single client that I run into has the ability to increase their business and their revenue a dramatic percentage right out of the gate because they don't understand that the gold mine that they're sitting on is the best source of referrals for them. And they go, yeah, but you know what? I, I don't want to feel like I'm pushy uh, asking for a referral. And I say, okay, well, tell me how you ask for a referral right now. Well, I say, hey, you know, if you think of anybody, can you can you you know mention my name or refer me? They always say yes, but let me ask you an honest question: Do they refer you? Yeah, every now and then, okay. And so I get excited about that because I'm going to share on this call today the strategies that I, I implement with these clients, and and out of the five clients, 
uh, the one client who built a business, sold it, then bought a couple of different franchises, still has a very thriving franchise, and then got in her, in her mind, hey, I need to start this new business, and so I'm going to start this this new business, <coughs> new business, and um, but after working together for about three and a half weeks, her, she realized, and her and her husband sat down and go, I don't really want to build this business. You know, I want to kind of, you know, I kind of do, but I don't really want to go after it with the same tenacity that I had before. And so, but the other four took exactly what I'm talking about today, and they now have a new problem, which is they can't find enough people to hire because now they're too busy. And so it's a great problem to have. And so what I tell them is, hey, your your existing client base is the best source of referrals. So when you look at, you already do a great job. And there used to be a saying that I used to subscribe to for many years, which is under promise and over deliver. Well, you think about, okay, what's our company motto? Well, our company motto is to under promise. Right? I mean, people are just going to want to do business with you, right? So, so uh, but then you have, then you have to save yourself and you go, but we over deliver, right? Well, why not over promise and and then work your tail off to over deliver? See, a lot of people don't want to take that 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 action towards doing that, and so they allow their people to not have to push and stretch to a higher level. And so what I tell people is like, hey, you need to overpromise, meaning you need to go after your client and say, hey, you know what? I am going to take care of your needs. And if you have a need that we can't take care of, then I'm going to go the extra mile to find somebody that can take care of it. It's it's become, you know, with the advent of the internet, Facebook, YouTube, uh, social media, all the stuff that has been created in the last two years, it's never been easier to help your client get solved whatever problem they have. Because the networks out there that are that are in existence today is 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 incredible. So, what I told my clients is like, hey, you know what? Take your like, let's just take this one client. You have 195 clients. Out of the 195 of them, how many of them do you absolutely love? That you absolutely like? Man, if I had another one just like that, he goes probably about 190. I'm like, okay, great. Now we got 190. So here's the deal. They've already bought in from you. They've already had a great um, experience with you. You like them. They like you. So let's put this system in place where we don't have to spend a single dime on marketing, and we can double and triple your business. Then we could take all that money, and if you still want to do marketing, now you got the money to do it. And so here's what I told them to do. Every single one of them. I said, I need you to, t- to create a list of the top 10 to 20 clients that you absolutely love, that you're like, man, if I had 10 to 20 more clients just like this, the skies would part, the heavens would open up, manna would fall, I would, I would like be super happy. Then what I want you to do is I want you to call them. Now, I've had other analytical type people say, well, I'll just email them. No, don't do that. I mean, there is a time and place to email this, but... For what we need to do, this is a system, and you need to – if you know, like, and trust them, and you honestly know, like, you know, you know, know, like, and trust them, they probably feel the same way about you. So why not just pick up the phone and give them a call and say, hey, you know, Joe, this is Fred, or this is John, and, you know, I'm working – you can have somebody else do this on your team. You can have – you can do it yourself, but let's just say you do it yourself. You call him up and say, hey, Joe, this is John. Hey, you've got a couple of minutes. I've got some uh, some very important things I want to talk about, and I need I really, really need your help. He's going to say yes. Or he might say no, give me a call back, and then you schedule an appointment. But let's just say he goes for it. So, hey, John, you know what? I, I made a list. My coach, my mentor, the guy that I heard on this mastermind call, whatever you want to say, uh, gave me this assignment. And I've identified my top 10 to 20 clients that I absolutely love, that I would like to have more of, and you're on that list. Pause, because he's going to say thank you. Great. So here's a couple of questions for you. If you were in a position to refer me to a friend or colleague, would you refer me? And he's going to say yes. And say, okay, let's just say you're talking to that person that you're going to refer me to. 
what would you actually say about me and my company? Oh, I would say this, this, and this. Now, I've done this so much that they always come back with three or four things, and you just write them in a bullet point, okay? So you would say this, 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 and this. Yes, okay? Let me repeat it back to you. So you would say this, 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 and this. Yep, great. What else would you add to it? They always come back with two or three things every freaking time. Well, I would say this, this, and this. Okay, great. So let me get this straight. You would say this, 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 and this. Yep, yep, fantastic. Now, here's how you get 100% testimonials and reviews because that's the title of today's call is how to get client reviews and how to get client referrals. And, and this is where we talk about delivering to your client at a high level, okay? Service delivery, the only way this works is if you and your team deliver at an extremely high level. You take really good care of the customer, they're willing to talk really well about you. And so you say, hey, can I do, can, do me a favor, can I take this, these six bullet points here Put them in a paragraph, add some grammar to it so it flows and it makes sense. Can I send that to you and have you verify it? And can I use that in my marketing? Yes. Yes, you can. Do you want me to mention your first and last name and company name? Because I'm going to use this in my marketing. I can flow some additional traffic to your business. They always say yes. Now, my job is to do two things, and this is where it becomes a high, this becomes a client retention and a client growth system, okay? This is how you show extreme value to your customer. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to email it to them. The other thing, this is where you have a great admin staff, is I'm going to, I'm going to have a box of thank you cards that I've already signed, okay? And, you know, because I... I can, I can sign my signature. I don't want to print everything on the card. I'm going to have an admin do that. Now, if you're by yourself or you're solo, then you're going to have to do this. So I'm going to send them an actual thank you card. Why? Because nobody gets cards anymore. Okay. Now, if you want to automate this, you could go and get a send out cards membership. Um, I think I have an affiliate link. I'll give it to you. I don't know. I just know that, you know, I mean, I have access to do this. Um, but I want to send them a thank you card. And I want to send them the quote. And when they email me back and say, the quote looks great, you have my permission to use it, then you send them a link. Now, if you don't have somebody, if you don't have a system in place that can facilitate your online reviews, such as Sotellus or Dan Knapp and I have a guy named Greg Amsler who does this professionally, you know, I want to be able to give that quote to them and make it easy for them. I want to eliminate friction points where they can get it on my Google site reviews, my Yelp um, you know, all the different review sites. So, so TELUS does it, Greg Amser does it. Uh, there's a lot of different things like this, but I want to eliminate the, the hassle of them putting the review out there. I need it on my Google review. I need it on that, okay? Because now they're yelling at the rooftops. Ben's great. Like Ben, Ben's a, Ben's a client of mine. You know, Ben Bautista, you know, great, great. Scrap Monkey Residential Services, great, great, great. You know, I want them bragging about me, okay? So that's step number one. Step number two is I sent them a thank you card. Now I want to follow up. Okay? I want to follow up with them. I want to give them about a week. I want to follow up with them, and I want to get a hold of him again. Say, hey, John or Joe, this is John again. Hey, man, thank you so much for approving the testimonial, and thank you so much for allowing me to post it on my Google reviews or Thank you for going on the LinkedIn and posting it for me. Thank you for sharing it on Facebook. Thank you for thank you for whatever it is they did. Yeah, you know, I, I want them to share it. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Out of curiosity, you mentioned if you were in a position to refer us to a friend or colleague, you would. By chance, who did you have in mind? Now, if I'm Alan, right, and I'm going to do this for everybody's business here. I'm going to give you – since you showed up, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to give you the script right here, and I'm recording this. So if I'm Alan, I'm going to say – because Alan goes after small business owners and home uh, computer users. So it's very simple. I'm going to say, hey, so you, thank you so much for the quote. I really appreciate it. By the way, you mentioned if you were a friend or – you know, if you knew a friend or colleague, you would refer us. By chance, who do you know? We do home computers, and we do people that own you know, their own business. Who do you know to your neighbor to your left or right that you can refer me to, or maybe somebody that you go to church with, or maybe somebody that you went to high school with or, 
a friend or somebody you went to a party with a couple of weeks ago, who do you know that you think would like me? Okay. And they're going to say, well, it, it's, it's Alexis. Okay, great. So, you know, I'm going to tell me about Alexa. Okay. Alexa. Great. Alexa Smith. Great. What's her phone number? Five, 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 one, two, one, two. Great. And say, why do you think she would be a good referral for me? Okay, great. Do I have your permission to tell her you referred me? Yes. Boom. Okay. And, and so that's how you get it. Now, if I'm Carrie, right, I'm going to say, hey, you mentioned last week that you were in a position to refer me to a friend or colleague, and you said you would, and I really appreciate that. By the way, who did you have in mind? It could be your neighbor to your right or to your left, somebody you went to college with, somebody you went to church with, a family friend. Like I'm literally the best gift that you can probably give them because I'm going to help them literally save a ton of money uh, right away, right out of the gate. Who did you have in mind? Find out who it is. Now, if I'm Dan, Dan focuses on small business websites. Okay, He's excellent at it. And so I'm going to say, hey, you talk to because Dan's not going to make this call. I already know. Like I'm doing, I'm gonna. I already have somebody else doing this call for Dan because Dan doesn't want to make these calls. <laughs> hey, not to embarrass you, Dan, but hey, know your strengths, know your weaknesses as a business owner, right? So Dan came to me and says, "Hey, I don't want to do this. This is not my personality." So I got somebody to do it for him. So now that person, Dan, is going to be able to call because he didn't have to do the original call, but this call Dan needs to do because it's it's a personal call, right? Hey, you were talking to John last week, and you told John that if you were in a position to refer us to a friend or colleague, you would. And I see a thank you card, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking John's call. Thank you for helping us out. Um, who did you have in mind? Who do you know that is a small business owner, or who do you know that actually works for a company? Maybe it could be your neighbor to the right or the left. Maybe it's somebody you know. Who do you know that – might be able to benefit from our services, and they're going to tell you. Now, if they say, well, let me think about it, just say, hey, I get it. I put you on the spot. Sorry about that. No problem. If you did know somebody, would that be? Be amazed at how all of a sudden they think about somebody. If not, then send them a referral form. And if you don't have a referral form and you're watching this recording, then you send me an email, okay, BDM. This stands for Business Development Manager at johntyron.com, and I will send you the actual word form with a referral form, and you modify it to your business. Okay? You send them the referral form. Say, hey, um, I'm going to send you the referral form. It's going to tell you who is a referral for me. Can you fill that out? Can I follow up with you? Today is Thursday. Can I follow up with you next Thursday and get that back from you? By the way, is there? Because this works really well if you're business to business, like Dan is. Who can I refer you over the next seven days? Who are you looking for? You know? So I'm going to get, I'm going to purposely find you two to three referrals over this next week. Can you do the same for me? They're going to say yes. Okay? Now, if I'm Ben, Ben owns an amazing company where he pressure washes the outside. He makes the outside of a home look absolutely beautiful. Okay, hauls away junk. He basically restores the good feeling you have as a homeowner on the outside of your home. So when you drive up after a long day at work and you look at your home after he's been there that day, him and his team, you're like, my house hasn't looked like this since the day I bought it. You know, and you got that warm feeling that you used to have. And so you're going to probably refer him to the next, next door neighbor to the left and to the right. So when Ben makes this call and he gets the testimonial and he sends a thank you card and he does the follow-up call, probably not him, but definitely going to have an admin do it is, hey, Ben wanted me to reach out to you. Okay, Ben wanted me to follow up and tell you thank you. You should have gotten a personal uh, signed card from him telling you thank you. You mentioned last week that if you were in a position to refer us to a friend or colleague, you would. Who did you have in mind? Do you know the neighbor to your right? Do you know the neighbor to your left? Do you know the neighbor across the street? Maybe the one kitty corner from you? Maybe your family, friends, relatives? You know, clients, people that were at your wedding, who do you know? You know, and they're going to tell you. By the way, and this applies to Alan, this applies to Dan, and it applies to Ben, and soon to apply to Carrie, hopefully, is all four of us are in a group called Latif. And so Ben has the ability now to say, hey, I just joined this amazing organization called Latif. We have 10 other construction-based 
people categories in that we got a carpet cleaner, we got a bathroom restoration dude, we've got a plumber, we've got a handyman. If you ever need any of those types of services, I'm your guy. Okay? So who can I refer to you and who could you refer to me? Who do you know? And they're gonna tell you. Yeah. And you take that, and as long as you do this consistent, because this becomes a system, okay? As long as you do this consistent, I will promise you this. You will continue to get predictable referrals going into every single month. You will have a new, brand new problem, which is you're going to have to find people. Alan has done this. He's got to find people right now. Ben has done this. He's got to find people right now, okay? So Ben is just getting started with this. But the thing is, is I would rather have a problem where, where I got too much business and I need to find employees. Like, I've been teaching this to these brand new clients that I've taken on this year. I'm like, wait, I haven't done this personally. You know, I have a lot of, I get a lot of referrals just organically. So I'm like, I wonder if I turn this on for my own business. So I did. And I'm like, crap. So now I got to hire, I'm hiring Ruth Mudd next week because it's just too much. I can't handle all this. You know, I got, I, I'm hiring Christine and I'm hiring Elena. So I'm hiring three people because I implemented this system in my own business and I had no idea the floodgate that would open up again um, because you can always turn it off. You can turn it off anytime you want. The customer service doesn't change. So now here's where it gets exciting and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to shut up after this and we're going to talk about this. Teach this to your employees. Okay. Teach this to your employees, put an incentive in place where if they do this and you can train them on doing this, heck, you can go and like, for those of you that are listening to the recording, you can say, Hey, watch this YouTube video. Like this maniac, uh, you know, gave this talk. And I think it's a good idea. You can, I'll train them. Right. And, and so tell them to do this, but your employees are on the front line and just tell them, Hey, we only get to do this. We only actually get to do this be because you do a great job. They go, and so you train them to do the best job you can, and then at the end of the day, they go, hey, you know what? Uh, how is the – like this works great in Ben's business. This work great. This will work great in Dan's business, Carrie's business, and Alan's business. Is If you have a system like Sotellus or you have a system like Greg Amsler's, while you're right there in the moment, you just finished up the job. Hey, did you, did you, um, uh, did, how, how do you feel about the service we provided you today? Great. What did you like about it? Great. Would you mind actually repeating that for me? On on a, I'm gonna I'm gonna text you a link right now. Now this works for Greg's system. It works for Sotellus. I can whip out my cell phone and I can say, hey, what? Okay, your first name, last name, cell number. Okay, I'm gonna send you a link right now. Okay. Can you click on that link? Yeah, great. Hey, Ben, by the way, Rudy did this <laughs> like last week. It was awesome. <laughs> like he said, he said, hey, would you did, – did, did you like the service? The lady goes, yeah, I loved it, man. I, I, I cannot believe you were able to make my bathtub look like it's brand new. Like that thing's over 20 years old, okay? But, and he goes, would you mind like saying exactly what you just said on my cell phone here? She goes, yeah. So he whips out his cell phone. And, and he goes, okay, what did you like about it? And she starts talking. Okay, would you refer us to a friend or colleague? Yes, we would. So he recorded it. <laughs> and so he put it out there. And, and uh, it's so easy to do. And so, uh, but this is how this becomes a system. So we're, we're going to prompt, we're going to over promise, over deliver. We're going to leverage our networks. Okay. We're going to help the client meet their need. We're going to go up and beyond what they're paying us for. We're going to surprise the living heck out of them. Okay. We're going to follow up with a thank you card. We're going to call them up and ask them for, you know, a quote that we can use in our marketing. And we're going to follow up and ask them for a referral. Now, if this seems like a lot of work, guess what? It is. Okay. And if it seems like, man, I don't want to do this. You know what? It's fine. You don't have to do it. But I will tell you this. The companies that make the most money and grow the most do the things other companies are not willing to do, okay? And that's a principle. 
You, if you don't want to do the things that are required to be successful, guess what? It's totally fine. It's your choice. But the people that, that succeed the most are willing to do the things others are not willing to do, which is why they live the life other people will never live. And this right here is one of those systems that will blow up your business. One other thing, once you have an established client base, and Alan can personally testify to this, all you got to do now, and I'm going to do the same thing with Ben that I did with Alan. And, and Alan and Ben, you both are clients, and, and Alan will tell you straight out, Ben, what's getting ready to happen to your business. You have all these satisfied clients. So all we got to do is we got to sit down and go, okay, what else do they need? What else can I provide for them? How can I take a list of all my services and create three packages? Alan's got three unbelievable packages. You can check them out at mousecallsonline.com. They're called the VIP plan. In 2000, I want to say 15, February 2015, we came together and we go, okay, we already have this client base. Let's create three packages. Now, the moment Alan finished his marketing on it, the moment we finished the packaging on it, the moment we finished the pricing on it, guess what we got? Every single one of his existing clients became brand new prospects. And within, I think, Alan, what, it was like two and a half weeks, we sold like 200 of those packages. It was insane. It was, um, I'll never forget it, frankly. I, I thought that we would be doing really well if we had an adoption rate of 30 to 50% on, on those items, but largely due to the fact that we'd been around a while and, and we had that relationship. When we offered it to the client base, we had over a 90% adoption rate. And to this day, to, it is. And to this day, our churn rate is way below industry average. You know, we, we, we have uh, two to three uh, percent of folks uh, try to cancel every, you know, er every year. And uh, sometimes it's just a quick courtesy call and explain, well, you know, okay, that's fine. We respect that, but we're going to be turning off this, 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 and this. And half the time they said, no, 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 no. You know what? I need all that. Let me, I change my mind. Let me renew. So, um, you know, and that's it, your, to your point, John, the things that we've come out with since that, you know, the, the vast majority of our client base doesn't have any idea of the, the sum of the offerings we have. I believe that we could increase our revenue 50% easily with just what we have now and, and not uh, that doesn't even count reaching out to the roughly 4,000 active people we have in our email database that aren't on a plan at all. You know, there, there's yeah. so much yeah. gold in them, their hills, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing for uh, Ben, Dan, uh, like Ben, for example. Um, ben, you can unmute yourself if you want to add any, any, anything to this. But Ben uh, formed a company called Scrap Monkey uh, Junk Removal. Since then, he branded it to Scrap Monkey Residential Services, right? Uh, pro uh, property services. Property services, okay. And so he does all the window, out external window cleaning, pressure washing, clean solar panels, cleans all the moss and green stuff off of your roof. There's so many different things that they do now that we're going to take those things and we're going to create three separate packages that have a reoccurring component to it. And now well over 2,500 clients become 2,500 brand new prospects. And the way we're going to approach it is the same way that, that Alan Reeves approached it is we're going to get a good 85 to 90% of the people that are going to buy these packages. Okay. And so, and Dan, Dan's been in business for a long time, but Dan now since we've been working together, offers so much more than just web design, okay? And we can take all those offerings and all those services and create those packages and put them together. Carrie, I've known Carrie for a long time, okay, before any of you. And, and so Carrie has the niche focus right now, but all those past clients, when you were doing consulting, now we create packages. We say, okay, not only am I going to help you with this, 
but I can still help you with this, 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 and this. We go to all of them with new packages, and they all become brand new clients. And so um, this is one of those things where it becomes um, – what did my, uh, my old mentor, uh, uh, Steve Nopleton, tell me? He goes, once you have a satisfied client base that knows, likes, and trusts you, and, and they're willing to talk positive about you, it becomes a ATM money printing machine because all you got to do is step back and go, what else does my client want? And then you go and give it to them. And the nice thing is they don't go shop you. They don't go out there and, 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 and try to get a better deal somewhere else. It's a lot easier to do business with you because they already know, like, and trust you. So any, um, I'm going to open it up now. Any questions about what I've talked about, any clarification needed, anything that you would like to add, go ahead and raise your hand. You must have did a great job of explaining it. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, John. So I have a question for you. Um, so you talk about having the, uh, you know, the, the field guys do, you know, do that sales pitch there at the end, or not the sales pitch, but the, uh, um the referral you know whether it be a video referral or a um um a um a referral um or a review on you know facebook or something like that so what if uh you your field guys you know you know they, they they'll talk to the customer but they just have a problem you know going above and beyond and asking for you know a, the referral or the review um, and in, in me, you know, I train them how to do it, but yet, you know, they, it's just not in their character to go and, and, and do that. Um, what's another option then, or, you know, what's, is there a way to, to get them to do it or do I have to look at other options to, to, uh, to do that? So. Excellent, excellent question. And my first response, and then I'm going to uh, solicit the response from everybody else, is whenever I talk to uh, an employee, um, a customer, um, you know, people that I know, and I'm working very, very hard on doing this consistently with my wife, and that is when I look at them, I see WIIFM right on their forehead. You know, which stands for what's in it for me. <laughs> so if I can find out what they're motivated by, um, which we did the assessments on your employees, okay? So I can I can look at those and debrief those employees and tell you specifically, here's what would motivate them. Not everybody's driven by money, okay? And I learned this when I had an IT company, is I had some engineers, it didn't matter how much money I threw their way, it was not going to motivate them. Uh, some of them were motivated by time off, paid time off. Some of them were motivated by they wanted their next certification. And so I want to create an incentive that rewards them for getting that. And so because it's marketing, right? And so if they know, like some of, some of, your, some of your guys might be saying, hey, man, if I can get – okay, so if you get – during this payroll cycle, and I'm just pulling something out of my butt here. But during this payroll cycle, for every 10 referrals that you, that you uh, get or every 10 reviews that you get during this payroll cycle, you're going to get an extra dollar per hour this payroll period. Um, that might work for some of them that are money motivated. The other ones, for every 10 reviews you get during this payroll cycle, you're going to get an extra two hours added to your PTO account for – Every 10 referrals or systems that you do, uh, you're going to get, uh, you know, an Amazon gift card. We've got to find out what motivates that individual that will make them want to do it because the ability to do this is very simple. I need to role play it with them consistently because people, people are hesitant to make phone calls or have a conversation because they don't know what to say if the person answers the phone, Okay. But once I role play it with them over and over and over again, where it becomes natural and they're comfortable, like my script will not work for you. 
your script will not work for me. I got to give them the, the the parameters of it and role play it with them, so it becomes natural for them, and they'll do the work and the effort if it's rewarding for them. So I got to find out number one what's rewarding for them, what they want, and and then from there I can give them the skill training to, to go out and do that and give them the tool. Like it, it takes me back to um, Infinity Mobile Glass. They are uh, – I worked with them for two and a half years when they were brand new in business, and and they just – they grew like a rabbit on a hormone diet, okay? And so what I did for them is I had them sign up for an app called So Tell Us. Now, I'm not endorsing So Tell Us right now because I found a better review system that I'm vetting right now. So you can still use that. That's the one that's on my website. But what it allowed my uh, – their, their field guys that changed windows out – it allowed them to have an app on the phone. And so when they were done with the changing out the window, they took before pictures, after pictures, and that's what went on their website. So in your case, you take before picture with the, with the client's permission, okay? And I take a before picture and after picture. I'll leave your address and all the identifiable information out, okay? And so that becomes good. But at the end, hey, are you satisfied? Yeah, great. Would you mind giving us a, a review? Yes. Would you like to do that on video or via text? And I don't I, I train them, don't get pushy there because I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Okay. They say text, and I say, okay, first name, last name, what's your cell number? Great. I send it to them. Okay, did you get it? Yeah, great. All right. Go ahead and open the app. Got it? All right. Press text. Great. Now everything that you just told me, just say it right there on the voice to text. Great. All right, you got that? All right, let's look at it real quick. Okay, great. All right, is this good? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and press send. Boom, done. Hey, just for doing that for us, I'm going to send you a thank you. Uh, do you prefer a Starbucks gift card or do you prefer an Amazon gift card? And that's how you get 100% reviews. And so it, it blew up their business so much that, you know, it's like, man, they ran the same problem. It's like, how do I find more window replacement guys? And so we got to find out what's the incentive for the employee, what's going to motivate them, and once we find out what motivates them, then the training's easy. Okay, go ahead, Alan. So I want to, again, just real quick offshoot to what John is saying. In my experience, yeah, um, training personality types, what's motivating them, that's all important, but your employees that are going to do the best by you, whatever role they're in, whatever role they play, whether they're the janitor or your lead engineer, they've got to believe in the product. And I mean, in their core heart, they've got to get it. It's got to click. I had, I had a, a guy on my staff and John met him and talked to him a few times years ago. His name was Travis. And we, Travis was in sales, but we were moving some things around and we, we put him for a time at, at our front desk. Um, when we were launching the VIP plans, we decided to, to give this a whirl. So I'm going through the VIP plans with Travis and I started out, I made a total mistake. I started talking about the, the tech pieces, the pieces of the stack that we were going to be giving these people. And you could just kind of see he's, he's politely sitting there. He's like, okay. Okay. And I said, no, okay. Scratch all that, Travis. Somebody comes in and we had a storefront at the time. We can clean up their computer. We can, we can do a diagnostic and kill the infection, the virus that's on it. It'd be about 200 bucks. But if they pay 399, they get all of that. They get a year of unlimited help desk support. They can call in any time. We remote in, we help them. We're their IT department for that computer. They get backup with daily reporting. They get a guaranteed antivirus. All this stuff adds up, adds up, adds up. So they have a choice. It's going to be 200 bucks or 400 bucks and they get all this stuff more. And he, he just kind of looked at me blankly. He said, that's an absolute no brainer. Who wouldn't do that? And I said, it's your job to communicate it in the way that I just did so that there is no choice. The choice is staring them right in the face. He internalized it. It clicked within 10 minutes. And from that moment on, whenever he would offer this to a client, we, reliably, they would go on. Now, contrast that with an engineer who is a pure engineer, a Spock type guy, okay? 
And I had this guy for three years and he was immersed in our VIP plans for three years. He might have sold 10 of them in three years. There were days where Travis would sell 10, Travis sell 10 in a day because it's just, you like, you need to do this. Like you're, it's a bad decision. If you go with the $200 option, you get so much more. If you spend twice as much, he just knew it. And so your people, no matter what role they're in, they have to believe, they have to understand, they have to be committed, they have to be, they have to feel ownership, they've got to feel like they're part of the team in order for them to execute on exactly what we're talking about here, evangelizing the offering, evangelizing the, the job that they're doing, evangelizing you as the owner, evangelizing the entire proposition. And, and if they're coming in at 60 or 70% of that, it comes across, man. They're not going to be able to pull it off because people can see, like, okay, well, you think this is a good thing, but you know, you're not acting like you buy it without thinking about it. So that's that's just my two cents on top of what John was saying. And ahead, Carrie. Carrie. Yeah, um, absent an app, which is a fabulous way to go. I've seen so many use it. But if you've got an entrepreneur on here that it doesn't have an app and they're just starting to get referrals, one of the things I know for sure is that uh, clients have amnesia. So documenting what they say to you when they first get on is how crummy it is, how awful it is, what a pain in the neck it is, how much time it's wasting them, whatever that is. I mean, in my case, it's usually sleepless nights and, and um, putting off paying bills and can't communicate to their spouse. But whatever it is for you, right, write it down because they will forget A, what it was like, and B, that you're the one that helped them there, even when you're in front of them, I got to tell you. Oh, yeah, it's improved. It's really great. Thanks. So (laughs) it really pays for you to remember what that is and be able to bring them back to that when they're about to give you a referral. And I will tell you, if you don't have an app, write the referral for them. You call up John and you say, hey, John, it was really great working with you. As I recall, before you started, you said it was a lot like this. Is that how you felt? That's what I I wrote down. And he goes, oh yeah. And now how does it feel? Just as you said, or what's what do you like best about it? You write that down. And now you've got all of the verbiage you need to write one for him and send it out and say, hey, I just wanted to get it a starter for you that you can edit any way you like, but if you've written it well, they'll sign off on it and send it back. So that's an easy way to go. The other thing I want to make sure, because I have to bounce, but that nobody misses that's watching this is that you're talking about share of customer instead of customer share. It is a huge turnaround in businesses. And I know you're really focused on that now, but it is how can you get a bigger share of this customer rather than always having to find more customers or snagging them from another company's share? Um, Did we answer your question, Ben? Yeah. So one of the things that I want to hit on that Carrie said is a bigger share of the customer, right? And I was talking to, um, uh, who was it? I was talking to uh, a, a colleague of mine, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I can't even remember who the heck it was. And we were having a conversation where in 2001, I took over, I was asked to become a partner and a sales manager in a company uh, in Sacramento that were, were doing managed services. So I'd managed at that time to take them from 500,000 a year to 2 million. And so he's like, Hey, I want you to be the sales manager and, and I'm going to make you a 10% partner. I'm like, no, I don't, I, I like the 10% partner thing, but I don't want to manage. You know? And he goes, okay, well then I'll find a manager and they can manage you. I go, well, that's not going to work either. So, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Right. And so my very first order is I had Jim Hafner. I had John Gary and I had um, uh, a guy named Dan. Okay. So I sit down, Jim had been there eight years longer than me. So let's look at your client base. So he whipped out his client base. He had 265 clients. And he was only producing 19% of the company's total revenue compared to my 36 clients that were producing 69% of the company's revenue. And I'm like, okay, what's the difference here? Well, the difference between the two is he went out and got a customer 
service a customer. All of his customers loved him. Okay, like it, I, I did. I did a lot of follow up on his customers. All of his customers absolutely loved him. Jim's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Jim's a great guy. Jim never ever took the relationship deeper than that one transaction. You know. And so I looked at, okay, what's the difference here? Well, the difference is is once I got them as a customer, I, I, I did not want to make a lot of cold calls. <laughs> I did not want to go out and constantly hunt down new business. And so I would sit down with the customer. I'd take them out to lunch. I would get to know them. I would get to know, like, you know, lots and lots of their employees. And my goal was to implement six to seven of my vendors into that customer. I wanted to help them with other things other than what I was selling, even if I wasn't getting paid. The reason is, is I wanted the relationship and I wanted them to be able to look at me and go, I'm just going to call John. I'm sure John knows somebody that can solve my microwave oven problem. You know, I, and the only reason I share it, I actually had a client call me and go, hey, do you know anybody that's appliance repair? And I'm like, uh, sure, yeah, I do. Had no clue who it was. But I did know this. I can go and find out and find somebody. And that's exactly what I did. And so, uh, and this is not about me. I'm just saying is once you have a client, like we spend so much time, money, energy to find a new client when all we got to do is over deliver with the client we already have and all we got to do now like if i want a new client tomorrow i can pick up the phone and call alan here i can call dan i can call ben i can call any one of my past clients and existing clients and go listen i got room for one more client this month who do you know they're all going to say try this person call this person call this person call that person i'll have a new client within 24 48 hours I already know because I've done it many, 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 many times. So I want everybody on the live call and all of you that are listening to the recording is understand once you have a client, they have – you've got to understand the mental shift that they have made. The mental shift is this. You went through all this energy and effort to convince them to do business with you. They said yes. They paid you the money. You delivered, and now there is a no like, and trust factor there that if you take the time and you get to know them and find out what else you can help them out with, and then you help them out with that, and then you help them again, 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 then here you are, Alan Reeves, you know, December 22nd. 2015 became a client of mine. Well, here we are. What is this today? Today is the 17th of March, and Alan's still a client of mine. And Alan knows. Alan can call me 24 hours a day, seven days a week with any problem he has. Okay, I don't care what the problem is. And I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to talk to him, and I will find somebody to fix and solve his problem. He knows that. Okay. He knows it beyond a shadow of a doubt, and and that's the kind of relationship you want with your client. It doesn't matter if you're doing janitorial services, if you're doing carpet cleaning services, exterior services, websites, whatever. Once you have a relationship with somebody, it's all about taking that relationship deeper and training your staff to do the same. And if your staff doesn't want to do that and you go through all the motions and effort to help them do that, then it's probably time to make a shift and a change. But once I get a client to a million dollars, that that million dollar to five million dollar space, I no longer do a one page plan with them. I go into EOS, which is an entrepreneur operating system off the book called Traction, and it's all based on values. We only hire from that point forward people that have very similar values to what the company is because they're in very key roles. Well, you could do that when you're a $100,000 company or a brand-new startup. You could say, hey, man, if you don't share the same attitude, the same care, the same love for a customer, then probably not gonna, probably not going to be a fit. I want them to know my mission. I want them to know my vision as the owner. I want them to be on board. 
And, um, and in some businesses, you could take your slow, sweet time to hire, and a lot of times that's the right thing to do. Other industries, I just need a body, man, you know, and, and, and I'll get there. So um, any other feedback, any other thing that you guys want to add to this? Go ahead, Dan. I just want to touch touch on the um, something you brought up earlier about the tip, or basically any business networking. But when you're when you're doing something like the tip, and you're doing business with people in a group like that, it does become about relationships, and you and you do start to gain an understanding of how important it is to develop a relationship with your with your client base because. It's a two-way street. You're going to give them business. They're going to give you business. Um, I so I would just put out there encouraging people to, you know, if you're not already looking to a business networking group, you know, there's Latip, there's BNI, there's there's a bunch of them out there. So I just want to put those two cents in. Yeah, I mean Latip, um, like I, yeah, and Mr. T years ago tried to get me to join the tip in 2016 and so i drove 30 minutes one way to attend this meeting great group of people like and i learned a long time ago associations everything you're you're the sum total of the top five people you hang out with and i mean that's just a scene that's happened for years um and so i'm like man just just the camaraderie be worth it but man 30 minutes and six 15 in the morning. I don't know, man. I said no, you know, and then I had a client um, who uh, was in a Carmichael group, which was 15 to 20 minutes closer, and, and a 45 member group, not a 21 member group, went over there, and I was so impressed with the way they ran that, that business and the fact that the average person had been there for 10 years or more, um, and the, the relationships that these people developed. And then it clicked on clicked on me. I'm like, I don't need to join. I'm not joining this to get referrals. I'm joining this because when I have a client that says I have this problem, I have this problem, I have this problem, I have that problem, I can instantly go to that app and go. I can find somebody. So it allowed me to become a yes man to everybody I know, not just clients, but family, friends, colleagues. I mean, I give away. I go sharing with somebody today. It's like not to brag or anything. I'm, I'm like the I've been the top tipper in any group I've been in since I've been in. You know, just because I joined that group because I wanted to help. I, I wanted to ease the burden of everybody I know and be able to be that yes man. And by giving, right? By the law of sowing and reaping works very very well in this organization. The more I've given, the more I've been blessed and I've received. Same here. It's like when we look at our clients and that, and that with those glasses on, with that lens on, it's like it's not okay. Great, we need a client. We need a client. We need to pay us money. We need to deliver service to stay in business. But when I take my clients who I have a relationship with now, and I say, okay, how can I serve them? How can I actually? Well, now that they bought from me, there, there's a relationship here. How can I do this? And I was driving down the road last week and. Somebody, uh, I forget what radio station I was listening to, they were talking about Joe Girard is in the Guinness Book of World Records. I didn't know that. Like, he's in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most cars sold. Okay? But he never did any advertising. He never did any marketing. Right? He never was the guy hanging out on the front lot. Like, you could not buy a car from Joe Girard without setting an appointment with him. And what he would do is every single month, I was shocked when I heard this, every, like, by the time he retired, he had four, over 4,500 clients, 4,500 clients once a month. I'm like, I have no idea how this guy did this. He hand wrote a thank you card to every single one of these clients and would mail it. Like how did he had to have an assistant? <laughs> you know? But that's how he was able to be the number one car salesperson in the world. Is 
thought, how can I make my client's day? Overpromised, he overdelivered. He never had to sell a single car in most of his career. They came to him to buy. They didn't shop him. They didn't go around to anybody else. Like he was a dominant, in his, he dominated his space. Well, if you look at the, the three, the four of us that are on this business, how can we? There are other people that do what Alan Reeves and Mouse Calls does. There's other people that do what Dan does. There's other people that do what Ben does. There's other people that do what I do. So what can we do to dominate that space that we're in? We have to do something that's dramatically different than what our competition does. We can't just be like the competition. You know, Steve Jobs did not try to compete with anybody. It, like, how am I going to – his his entire mission, vision in life was I want to ding the universe before I die. I want to create products that forever change the way people operate on this planet. I think he did, achieved it. You know? And and so that's why people go – people look at Elon Musk and go, that guy is superhuman. You know? He's just – he's he's obsessed obsessed with creating the best that he can possibly be in the space that he's at. You know, and so um regardless of what it you know, I'm talking to people on the recording, regardless of what you think about the guy, it's like he's the first guy ever to have four billion dollar companies uh at the same time. So, you know, he's done a you know, his passion, you gotta find what your passion is. What is your passion? Why are you servicing your clients? And if you're not in love with your clients, then you gotta, you got to either tweak your business or like this one client that I just said, hey, we were working together for three and a half weeks, and she's like, I'm not passionate about this new business I just started. It's not. So I'm going to create it as a lifestyle business. I'm like, hey, man, I am happy for you. Because you should be wanting to wake up and go do your business, take care of your customers, and and lay your head on the pillow at night going, man, I, I love my life. You know? And you only get one shot at this life. And at the end of the day, you don't get a repeat. So um, I'm excited that the three of you are here because uh, I'm working with all three of you. And all of you are absolutely excellent at what you do. And so for those of you that are listening to the recording, if you need any, any, and I mean any, computer services for your home, for your business, uh, if you need to know that your information is not out on the dark web, if you need to know that you're completely protected from an identity theft situation, you need to get a hold of Alan Reeves. I've known Alan for six years. I would trust him with my own child, okay? And 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 I have actually, you know. And so I would I, I I can't tell you how much I would I would trust him with my computer systems. He manages all my stuff. Okay? I don't have to worry about Jack, okay? Dan Dan manages and maintains my website. Every single person I've ever referred to this guy has has come back and thanked me. Okay, most of my clients have gotten their websites through him. He does an unbelievable job. I still like my very first thought, and Dan probably remembers this. Uh, the very first two weeks we're working together, and I'm finding out what he's doing for small business owners on a website basis, and he tells me his pricing. I'm like, how are you making money doing this? I mean, really? Like, I paid eight thousand dollars for my website, and you're telling me you're going to do it? For fourteen hundred ninety-five bucks, how's that even possible? And then the other thing he did is, I'm like, the next thing out of his mouth really shocked me is he goes, "Well, I'm going to charge ninety-nine dollars a month, and it comes with unlimited updates and unlimited revisions." I'm like, "What?" Aaron, the the dude that I was using was charging me twenty-eight hundred dollars a month to maintain my shit. How are you doing this? And then he told me, you know, it's like he takes a small amount of clients. He takes really good care of them. He's got systems in place to make sure the website runs fast, that they're taken care of. And he doesn't, he doesn't lose clients. You know, he's like, I don't lose clients. 
Like, I don't have I don't have a chart rate. I'm like, okay, I get it now. You know? So I referred everybody to him. Like, I just referred him a brand new client I got two weeks ago, and, and the dude's having all of his stuff done. Then, after spending time with Ben and realizing, you know, I, I thought, okay, junk removal. I mean, how glamorous is that? Right? And then I sat down with him, and I started talking to him and realizing, okay, not only do they do junk services, but when I found out what he does to the external of a house, you know, how they, how, they, how they clean it up, how they clean the gutters, how they literally make that outside of that house look like it did the day that the person bought it, I'm like, nobody does this. <laughs> nobody does this. We're, we're not, we need to market this, you know, because if you think about when you, everybody watching the recording, I want you to pay close attention to it. If you've ever bought a home, I remember the first home I bought. The moment we closed escrow, the moment I got those keys in my hand, I'll never forget walking up to the home and looking at it and was just like, this is mine. <laughs> you know? And then and how perfect it was, because it's always perfect when you buy it, right? They, they, it's in the best shape it's ever going to be. <laughs> you know? And then you walk inside, and I stand on the top of the staircase, and I look down, I'm like, this is mine, you know? And so when I was talking to Ben and I was realizing what they're actually doing, it's not junk removal. It's not pressure washing. It's not cleaning gutters. It's not cleaning up the roof and washing solar panels and none of that. It's, that's not what the business he's in. The business he's in is giving you that warm, fuzzy feeling that you used to have when you first bought that home. And that's what we're providing for people. And so – you got to make that emotional connection with your product and service. And so um, uh, I did that. We don't, we don't normally promote on this call, but because I believe so much in all three of you guys' products and services, I wanted to take time. And Dan Knapp here is an excellent video guy. So, Dan, I'll send you the recording and do me a huge favor. Cut out the piece for Alan. Okay? Cut out the piece for you. Cut out the piece for Ben, and I would really appreciate it if you would send it to them. Okay? And you guys use that in your marketing. You guys are all winners. And for those of you that are not on the live call, come to the live call. We do this every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. You can bring whatever business challenge you have here, and we're going to help you. So anybody else got any – we're a little bit over time here. So uh, have a wonderful week, guys. And uh, it's been a great call. Go out and make it happen. We'll see you guys.